Hello everyone, and welcome to another Company Heroes 2 replay cast. My name is ATR, and today we're going to have ourselves another 2v2. This time around is going to be on Minsk Pocket. Our heroes for this this time, or this time around, are going to be Stofa, playing for the Soviets. We've seen him before, very good player. We'll talk about him a little bit in a little bit. <laughs> but his ally today is going to be SOE Woodlaw. So Wood. Wood <laughs> is going to be his ally. His opponents today are going to be ZN Fox Fox. So this is going to be Fox Fox playing for the Germans. And his ally in the pink is going to be Dilophosaurus. So before we talk about our players a little bit, as you can probably tell, this is once again another little bit of a trial cast. I have a little bit of a different setup. Like I said, I want to keep using the same 1v1 setup because, well, I mean, taking up this spot right here doesn't really do much considering that the resource bar, you know, kind of comes up to that. So I think it's okay. Um, I have over here on the uh, lower right-hand side the unit production for the ally this time around rather than the enemy. And then I move the, um, you know, the information for the enemies down to the bar. Uh, it was suggested to me. I like that suggestion and I'm trying it out. Let me know what you think about it. I might still tinker a bit with the sizes to make those icons a little bit bigger. But they are bigger than they were before, I believe, so they should be at least a little bit easier to see. But again, let me know what you think. Enough of that anyways. Let's go ahead and talk about our players. Um, we have Dilophosaurus here, which is currently, uh, with his uh, tag, actually comes up as Stugosaurus. So he likes to change his name, but most of the time keep it dinosaur related. He is currently ranked uh, 24 in the 2v2 ladder for his German play. So, very good 2v2 are right here. Uh, the one opposing him right now, which is Stofa, is also very good. He is currently ranked in his Soviet play 6th overall in the 2v2 ladder. So, amazingly good. And we see Maxim Machine Gun and Combat Engineers against MG42 and Pios. Who's going to win this fight? Well, probably the combat engineers, because the pilots are already pinned down, but there goes the combat engineers, so really this comes down to who wants to keep the point. But there is a Grenadier squad coming into the right-hand side, which will make that Maxi Machine Gun just get out of the way. Anyways, while that happens, let's take a look at the right-hand side. Small engagement here by the other two players, and let's talk about them a little bit. So we have, we'll keep this on, because I don't want to have this bar open, at least not too much, because it's meh. Uh, we have Woodlol, Wood, we'll just call him. Uh, this is Stofa's ally. He is currently ranked 42 on the Soviet 2v2 ladder. And the man that is about to lose a machine gun, <laughs> which is Fox Fox, is, well, not ranked high up there, but I will say that his 2v2 German play has seen 1,200 games, over 1,200 games at the time of casting this. So as far as experience, he's got, he's got a lot. So we see uh, a little bit of a steal there on the MG42. However, the conscript squad does end up dying, it looks like. And the uh, the MG42, however, does get stolen. And the Grand Ears are just helpless to stop that. Uh, talking about the game a little bit, we have Doctrine selected pretty much for everybody except um, Wood. We have the Soviet Shock Army selected for Stofa. We have the... Elite Troops Doctrine, already selected for um, Fox. Yeah, Fox. Pretty sure it's Fox. Yeah, Elite Troops Doctrine for Fox. There we go. And well, I guess we'll just show it like this. And Dilophosaurus has his Assault Support Doctrine. So, there you go. So, engagement's all over the place. It looks like right now it's uh, two 1v1s going on at the same time. We have Wood and Fox Fox duking it out over on the right-hand side of the map. And Stofa and Dilophosaurus over on the left-hand side of the map. Also in the center. Shock troops on the field for Stofa. They're going to chase down those grenadiers. There isn't anything nearby to help them. There is even a maxi machine gun in the way, which if it turns around will do some damage to the grenadiers. However, they are already retreating, so they will get out of there alive. Grenadiers with LMGs on the left-hand side, and we have conscripts just moving around. There is a squad behind enemy lines. That's a Pio, but that's about it. And mortars and stuff coming out on, on the field for uh, Dilophosaurus. Sorry. Yeah, that one's right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we got it right. Yeah, the Lophosaurus is the one on the right here, and Fox is the one on the left. Okay, we're good. Okay. 
So, uh, sorry about that. A little bit distracted here. She's making sure my overlay is all in proper order. But oh well. Anyway, so yeah, like I said, it's kind of like two 1v1s going on at the same time right now. No combined effort. Uh, we see Stelfast Chalk Troops running straight into an MG42. Mortars and Grants on the field. Maxim Machine Gun in a little bit of a flanking position does manage to get a pin down on that Grenadier. However, the Mortar is targeting that Maxim Machine Gun, which will dislodge it in a little bit. The MG42 will get turned around to try to shoot at the Maxim, but it isn't in range just yet. Right hand side, we see Pyos and MG42 just trying to hold the line against the infantry forces of Woot. And he is going to be sending stuff there. Into the, <laughs> the Pyos did go down, and we have, let's see, Tech, uh, we have Tier 1 going down for Stofa. He hasn't gotten anything from Tier 1, but, well, it did go down. Tier 2 as well, so, hmm, interesting choice there. wonder why he went for the Tier 1 afterwards. Oh, well. But uh, Tier 2 going down for Woodlol, and he is going to be doing that. The MG over here is a stolen MG42, so it's not a maximum machine gun, and the conscripts are being pinned down by this MG42, which is getting shot in return by the other. Uh, back at base for the Germans, we see Tier 2 going down for Fox Fox, and we also have... No, actually, we don't have anything else. No additional tech for uh, Dilophosaurus just yet. Center map, we have some engagements, and finally, a little bit of a combination. We have conscripts for Wood and the uh, maximum machine gun for Stofa, moving into the center, pushing away an MG42, forcing it off the map, and yeah, that's about it. Conscripts on the left-hand side going to move up onto a mortar. That mortar is going to have to retreat. And there is an MG42 here for defense, which will not be able to defend it. And the PPS agents actually pop right as the engagement goes off for Stofa. So those conscripts will do quite a bit of damage to the M to the mortar, I mean. But the mortar will make it out alive. It is a four-man squad. And as much as those PPS agents rock, they don't rock that much. Rifle nade going down on the maximum machine gun, losing the gunner, but still at five man, continues to shoot. Mortar going, I mean, not mortar, Molotov going down by the conscripts from Wood, and he manages to push him away. I mean, the Grandiers, at least. Right hand side, we see Fox Fox moving out in force. He has two Grenadiers, one with G43s, one with an LMG, and MG42 and Pyo is moving to the right hand side, trying to dislodge right now Wood that is currently capturing as much as he can. Left hand side, or center map, pretty much. Shock troops running into that MG42 once again, getting mauled down to three men. Not able to do much right now. We have this Maxim machine gun and the conscripts in the center. And we hear the G43s going off from the Grand Year, so we're on the right hand side with a scout car now for support. So the first vehicle on the field. AT gun getting produced for uh, Wood. He's going to get one right now. Should be popping in a second. Uh, somewhere around there. Come on, pop. Pop it up, pop up. There you go. There's pops. So. AT gun on the field, it's going to be helpful over here. However, it is only a scout car, so not really that necessary, but it'll help. Um, also, uh, worth noting is that the Doctrine has been selected for Wooch, and that is the mechanized support tactics. I, uh, I like that Doctrine, and if you like that Doctrine, you can actually currently get it for free if you don't have it just yet. I believe it is still ongoing. They replenish the keys. And you can get it over at Alienware Arena, I believe it's called. If anybody's interested, just leave a comment and I'll put the link. If not, I'll just leave it. But yeah, if you want that doctrine that Woodwall has right now, you can get it for free. You don't even have to pay for it if you don't have it. Center map, that is a Maxim machine gun getting cleared out for Stoffa. He loses it and the Panzer Grenadiers pick it up. A little bit of a super powered uh, Maxim machine gun there, considering that it has. Storm Gewehr rifles on its extra men, so it's going to do quite a bit of damage. Obviously, the 25% increased damage still applies, so it's not going to be, you know, <laughs> as tough as a standard Panzer Grenadier squad. Mine's getting laid down in the approach from uh, Fox Fox base, so that's very nice, and that's a lot of mines actually for Woodlow. So very aggressive mining here behind enemy lines and such. So right now, I do not believe that Fox Fox will be aware of those mines, so those will probably come into play and hit something at the very least. MG4, no, stolen Maxim machine gun, set up in an angle that will not shoot at these combat engineers, so they're going to have to run, but they will have to run through all the enemy troops. We have conscripts, AT guns, and more Maxim machine guns. Actually, this is an MG42 on the field, pushing over on the right-hand side for Wood Lowell. Uh, Fox trying to hold its line as he can, and on the left-hand side, we see that Stofa has suffered quite a bit of losses. In fact, he is down to only one conscript squad, one shock troop, a Maxim machine gun. Pretty sure it's a Maxim, right? Yeah, it's a Maxim machine gun. And uh, his combat engineers. However, he is building himself tier four, so that will have give him a quite powerful boost in 
field presence with tanks. Probably the one that would do the most impact would be an SU-76 from that with its barrage ability. An SU-85 wouldn't really be that great. There isn't any Tier 3 right now, or Tier 4 for that matter, uh, for the Germans. Tier 3 finally going down for Dilophosaurus, so I suppose an SU-85 will not be, you know, a miss, but still. So anyways, right hand side, the uh, SIS gun using its barrage ability for wood, clearing out that uh, MG-42. The stolen Maxim machine gun, however, does help him hold the line. Molotov landing right on top of them. MG, oh, sorry, Maxim machine gun, it's not an MG-42. And a Grenadier squad manages to make it out alive there barely with just one man. It does have to run through the center of the map, however, it will be alive. And uh, mines getting detonated over here on the right hand side. It looks like the Pios took quite a beating. And the scout car fortunately makes it out alive. Pack on backing off, not wanting to take a risk. And left hand side, we see movement from Stofa behind. Well, not really behind enemy lines. He does have a Maxim machine gun over here for support. Panzer Grenadier is doing quite a bit of a number on those conscripts. However, the PPS agents do help out. And there is a MG42 here that might get stolen. Yeah, there it goes. And a full retreat to get those troops back and recover that heavy weapon. Very nice. MG42 packed up and retreated. Ooh, a nasty rifle nade there by uh, Dilophosaurus. But it manages to get out of there barely with one man. And there's no opposition on the way, so it will make it out. Lucky there for uh, Stofa, but well, at least he made it out. So quite a low vehicle count game. It's very interesting. Usually by this point you would see some type of tank. However, uh, we do have a tank being produced for um, Dilophosaurus. You can't see it right there on the overlay, but it is going. You can barely see it, but boop, there it goes. It pops. And here comes the Panzer IV. So at this point, uh, the only thing stopping that Panzer IV is an AT gun. That AT gun is currently over here in the north and can get flanked very easily. Even decrewed by a Panzer Grenadier squad that is right there ready for it. Uh, the MG42 that got stolen is now decrewed. Could use a little bit of loving there, but it's going to be a bit. MG42 over here as well, taking shots at those Panzer Grenadiers. Manages to catch them right at the edge of its arc of fire, getting that pin down quite quickly. There's another one right at the edge that will on getting shot, but the weapons are now cleared out. That AT gun is off the field, and the, Mac, the MG-42 is forced to retreat. Panzer IV in the center of the map does clear out something. What was that? It looks like it was a combat engineer squad, potentially. Yeah, those look like combat engineers. And the Panzer IV is unopposed. We do have Tier four down for uh, Stofa, so he could build himself an SU-85. However, he does not have nearly enough fuel for that, so it's going to be a little bit. So that Panzer IV is currently unopposed. Left hand side, shock troops and a, what is that, Maxim? Sorry, there you go, Maxim, yeah. Moving around, not a thing to oppose him. Conscripts trying to push on that Panzer IV. They do have a teammates already researched, so they will be able to do a little bit of a threat there. It's just, you know, threatening to cripple it, but that's about it. The AT gun over here on the north has not gotten taken by the Fox Fox player. He does have his own pack gun, so I suppose he doesn't need it, but he should either crew it up or destroy it if he's not going to be, you know, replacing it. I mean, taking it over, I'm replacing Anyways, Conscript's getting mauled by the Panzer Grenadiers, forced to retreat down to one man. There is a MG-42 in the center that will stop those Panzer Grenadiers from approaching, and they are now suppressed. They are forced to retreat, and the Conscripts are going to make it out alive. Panzer IV pushes forward to take shots at the MG-42, but the MG-42 will not fall to the Panzer IV, at least not very quickly, so it's going to be a little while. And so far, we still have nothing for the uh, Soviets. Only Tier 2 now for uh, Woodlow. He does not have really any call-in that he can call in right now. He does have the ability to call in that uh, salt gun. What is it called? I forget it. Let me double check here. It is the ISU. Yeah, there we go. But that is until 11 points, and he doesn't have 11 points, so it's going to be a while. Northern side, we hear the Maxim machine gun that got stolen opening up on its Soviet forces. Soviet forces came down, forced to back off, and mortars and AT guns just shooting gleefully at the enemy, which is being unopposed right now, so this is quite a tough spot for Woodlow. Uh, center map, the Panzer IV still again unopposed. We now have another AT gun on the field for Woodlow. He's going to start shooting at that Panzer IV. The Panzer IV dodges the shot and backs off, and we'll make it out of there without anything happening to it. We now have a uh, Opal Blitz cargo truck for Dilophosaurus on the right-hand side. And we have a shock troop behind enemy lines just going for points. 
decapping that point, gonna get run down or chased down by the Panzer IV. Panzer IV will not crush them as they retreat because the AI is not permitted, but the uh, units are getting interrupted on the retreat path, so it makes it a little bit harder to retreat. Center map, units pushing forward, conscripts and combat engineers. We have an MG42 set up, the conscripts get caught by the MG42, and the combat engineers are moving to get a little bit of a flank on that MG42. Can they get behind the Tark of Fire? They will be able to get behind the Ark of Fire of the MG42. The conscript is sitting there, and a Molotov landing right on top of the combat engineers and the MG42, forcing it to pack up and retreat. The combat engineers doing a little bit of extra damage as it retreats, and the mortar is as well on their fire. However, Panzer IV and a... Uh, Panzer IV and Scout Car are now forcing that combat engineer to retreat. Fortunately for the combat engineer, the Scout Car did not pursue, but SU-85 now on the field for Stofa takes a nasty shot at that SU-85. The AT gun takes a shot at the Scout Car and clears it out, and the SU-85 is now in pursuit of that Panzer IV. The Panzer IV is backing off as fast as it can out of the field. It got down to about half health and is going to get the hell out of there before anything else happens. So a nice stabilization here for the Soviet players. They still have to deal with the massive amounts of German forces over in the north. Right hand side, they have two AT guns, so the SU-85, even though it is already useless because of the fact that it can't kill infantry, it's even more useless because it can't really penetrate into that area. SU-76, however, would be uh, quite nice because its barrage ability could clear out those AT guns, you know, behind the line of sight. Just pop it right here in the wall, shoot over, try to clear out those guns. You know, that would help, but... He doesn't have the fuel for it, so it's not going to happen. Panzer Grenadiers pushing forward, the SU-85 retreating, and it only really needs to retreat from the Grenadiers, the Grenadiers can Faust it. These Panzer Grenadiers need to get upgraded with Shrex if they want to be any threat to the SU-85. And we have a bunker lane going down on the MG-42 that got stolen by Stofa. Down to one man, the Panzer Grenadiers clearing it out, down it goes, not even going to retreat. And the uh, artillery gun from the SIS gun trying to clear out enemy units. It does manage to hit one of the Grenadier squads, forcing both to retreat and losing one of its LMGs. MG-42 does get taken, but there is now an LMG on the field, which either the shock troops could benefit from or conscripts, but we only have one conscript squad that's currently retreating back at base for Stofa. Uh, his ally does have a lot more infantry, but all of them are currently back at base, getting healed up and reinforced. Really not much on the field aside from the AT guns. We have some... Uh, MG42s behind enemy lines, not behind enemy lines, behind a truck, just, you know, guarding the area. And the LMG looks like it actually got picked up by somebody. Who picked it up? Probably a Grenadier squad, I would assume. They're moving around here right now. And they have... Well, actually, no. Maybe the Panzer Grenadiers? Yeah, Panzer Grenadiers picked it up. Look at that. Panzer Grenadiers are running into enemy lines, and yeah, they have themselves an LMG, so that kind of helps out against, you know, the amount of uh, anti-infantry capability that they lost by getting two Shreks. If they stand still, that LMG will do quite a bit of work. Panzer Grenadiers now veteran C3, so they're even more uh, scary. And we see a call-in of an ability that is a strafing run by uh, Dilophosaurus right here into the center. Does manage to do some damage to squads and pin down this spot over here, but that's about it. Not much else going down, although that spot might have actually been pinned down by these sentry points too. Panzer Grenadiers having to retreat through the enemy lines. The Maxim Machine Gun is turned around to face the other enemies, and it manages to clear out a squad. I'm not exactly sure what it was. And we see something going down, and that was a Panzer IV, it looks like. Yes. So the SU-85 for Sofa manages to clear out the Panzer IV over here on the left-hand side. Nice victory for him. But the strafing run keeps going down, pinning down pretty much every infantry unit here and doing quite a bit of damage. They all decide to retreat before the next strafing uh, pass comes around. Conscripts do hold their ground, but that is a mistake. These guys are going to die if they don't get out of there, I believe. The AT gun is backing off, gets picked up by Stofa. He does retreat finally, and the strafing run is coming around for another pass. That Maxim Machine Gun is probably going to be the target of it. And... No, actually, over here, the shock troops end up getting pinned down, and the conscripts as well, so still not letting off of those conscripts, but the strafing run is now passed, and it's going to be fine. Nasty rifle nade on that, uh, what is that, a Maxim machine gun? Yeah. Forces it away, and we now have more tanks on the field. Oh, Dilophosaurus goes straight for the Tiger. Tiger now on the field. Only, was an S bleh, only one SU-85 to oppose it, but it is currently damaged with the engine, and because of that, it's not going to be able to be very mobile. It also has focus sight right now, which means it's going to be incredibly slow. But 
uh, Stolfi is aware of the Tiger. He retreats with his Maxim machine gun, and that SU-85 is just going to start backing off very slowly. Needs to cut that focus side if he wants to get it out of there. Make sure you click that when you want to move your tank. Click that, get it out of there. But oh well. Still moving very slowly. Managing to get out of there. No immediate threat, so I suppose it's fine. But yeah, remember you can always do that. G43s on these Grenadiers doing quite a number on that mortar. That mortar is now cleared out. And that is a 120mm mortar that could be very useful to the German forces. And they think the same. They're going to go pick it up and take it for themselves and bring it back. Not exactly sure why no retreat order was given on that squad, but it is now out of the field. The SU-85 still with focus sight, taking some shots at that Tiger. The Tiger returns fire, and the focus sight is not helping it. We see a Blitzkrieg going down by the Panther. The Panther is going to get right behind that SU-85, although it decides to go straight at it. That is not a ram ability, but it does the job. It does the same, and the SU-85 is now a goner, simply because the focus sight is, you know, was not used. It could have been already back at base and a little bit more defended if, you know, Sofa had taken away that ability. So the Panther uh, helps out the Tiger in clearing it out. The Tiger does suffer some damage, but not a lot. It's down to about half health. Mark Vehicle did go down on the Tiger, but, you know, not enough to clear it out. Took this one at And the Panther backs off, taking some damage down to about half health, but more strafing runs coming down from Dilophosaurus right on top of all the German infantry. Although that is actually a Thermobic attack on top of all the infantry. And it does... Quite a bit, but not a lot. Forces the retreat of all the squads. Gonna loiter over the area. And we have two. Wow, that is three planes just circling the skies. Look at that. One, two. Where's the other one? Oh, they're all gone. Well, that's sad. Well, one more is coming back. Strafing run right on top of that MG42. Down it goes, and the plane also crashes because of the top gunner on that Panther right into the battlefield. Doesn't kill anything, unfortunately, but... A lot of uh, air battles going around right now. Shock troops and conscripts pushing forward, forcing that mortar to pack up and leave. The Panther taking some shots at distance, trying to hold off those shock troops. Not the best anti-infantry anti tank, so won't do much, but it will do something. And we now have an ISU on the field for Woodlow, taking some shots, clearing out something right here. What was that? That was a Maxim machine gun that got stolen, got completely annihilated, so it is now gone. Needs to be able to get some sight range so that it can shoot stuff. It does have focus sight, so it will allow it to shoot at range. And that uh, AT, AT gun is getting looked at by the ISU very closely. The ISU turns around, takes a shot, and misses horribly. Conscript's gonna move in to support the ISU. The ISU will take a shot and another shot from the Panther. The ISU is not aimed in the right direction against the Panther. Takes a shot. Oh, ho, ho, oh wait, no, that probably wasn't 18 8 right? Yeah, that should, that, that has to be an 18 8 but it looked very awesome. It looked like the ISU hit and detonated the, uh, the engine on that Panther. Keeps shooting at range because of its incredible range. Molotov's going down on those uh, AT guns, uh, the AT gun, the Soviet one that got stolen, does get cleared out. The ISU continues to shoot, just being a massive artillery gun, essentially, in this stage. And the Panzer Grenadiers and Grenadiers are pushing forward. The ISU trying to hold the line will take another shot as it approaches. And we see shot going off right in the middle of everything. Drops a Panzer Shrek, drops a second Panzer Shrek. So that, wow, that Panzer Grenadier squad lost both its Shreks and only ended up with its LMGs. One of them still on the field. Grenadiers will crawl to pick it up. There it goes. So those Grenadiers now have a Shrek, which means, you know, a little bit difficult for the uh, Soviet players now. But uh, another shot goes off, and Panzer Shrek gets dropped. Wow. That is that is quite unlucky for that Panzer Shrek. <laughs> so we see the Tiger going over to the right-hand side, going to try to chase down that ISU. We have an SU-85 in the way, so that uh, Tiger will not be able to stop the ISU. The, uh, the SU-85 decides to back off rather than turn its gun against the Tiger. It does finally take a shot and bounces off the front alarm, only a little bit of damage. Also, the ISU could shoot ground if it wanted to try to hit the Tiger, but I'm pretty sure it's not being, uh, you know, controlled right now. Combat engineers decide to go pick up that Panzer Shrek. They don't want to leave it back in enemy hands, and we still have some AT guns just dropped in the middle of nowhere that need to get picked up or destroyed. I'm assuming that Woodlow probably wants to pick him up. And victory point-wise, we haven't talked about that. 370 for the uh, Soviets. 276 for the Germans, so still anybody's game, currently in the favor of the Soviets, but the Soviets are a little bit uh, cornered into their little sector of the map. 
They are pushing out with the uh, SU-85. The Tiger is forced to back off, even though it is a big hulking beast. The Conscripts are oorang forward, trying to get in range for an 18-8. They do get in range, throw the 18-8, just bounces off the front of the armor and are forced to retreat, get annihilated by a last shot by the Tiger, so it was definitely not worth it to go that deep. Shot group's right-hand side. Sorry. Excuse me, let me take a quick Ah, sorry about that. Uh, shot group's on the right-hand side getting suppressed by the MG42, but they do pop a smoke nade right in front of them, breaking that line aside. The MG42 gets flanked, even though they're just crawling right in front of it, but it does force a retreat, and all the troops are off of that side. The shot group's now back on their feet. Veterans E2 are going to move to the right-hand side, and the ISU continues to take some shots at whatever it can, clearing out the... The, the walls apparently and a nice uh, Stuka barrage or strafing run here by uh, Stolfa clears out a lot of infantry does not end up killing any squads but these tanks are in a lot of trouble there's now two tigers on the field however so those tigers are going to take quite a bit of punishment we also see a strafing run or what the hell was that Oh, a fragmentation bomb, sorry, right on top of uh, the troops over here, clearing out that AT gun. The SU-85 forced to back off, taking some damage, but inflicting more damage on the Tigers per se. The Tigers pretty much on phase right now, they will push back. And we have the ASU over here on the right-hand side with another ISU on the field. So going for double ISUs, that's why I do like that doctrine. It has guards, it has marked vehicle and ISUs. That is quite boss. And if you go for the AT guns, you also have the ability to cloak them. Not something we have seen used right now for Woodlow, but it is an ability. The pack guns, I don't believe they gained this, but the AT guns do. The uh, Soviet AT guns. Strafing runs going down for Stofa, clearing out infantry all over the place. The skill, uh, <laughs> the skill planes, and uh, yeah, they, are, they go off. So left-hand side, we now see a big push from the German forces with their tanks. Those are four tanks. Two Panthers and two Tigers, that is very scary for anybody to look at. And they're just going to the right-hand side. They're going to run over some Conscripts. The Conscripts forced to retreat. Veterans E2 acquired in the process, getting mauled as they retreat. But they're quite deft and uh, adept at dodging bullets. Tigers taking shots in the center, and they just back off. SU-85 as well on the field for Stolfa. He now has two, and with two ISUs. They could start making a push, however, they would have to focus the Tigers and the Panthers in, you know, succession and try to take them out one by one very quickly. Otherwise, they could very easily get overwhelmed because, well, if you notice, all these four Tigers, they have turrets and all these four tanks, they don't. So they have to face forward. So if these tanks can get behind the Soviet tanks, well, they win. If the Soviet tanks can keep them at range and in front of them, then the Soviet tanks win. Combat Engineers, the ISU and everything getting flanked or assaulted right now by the Panther. The ISU in a very difficult spot. Does take a shot at that Panther, manages to get some damage, but the Panthers are now moving right behind that ISU. Going to get a lot of damage going down. The S, the AT gun taking some shots at the Panther. Mark vehicle going down on one of the Panthers. One ISU will go down. The second ISU is nearby, but not able to support because of line of sight. And the ISU does go down. The AT gun continues to shoot as it can. The Tiger now behind the AT gun, the Panther taking quite a bit of damage, down to a sliver of health, can a one last shot go off, does go off, down goes the Panther, and the other Panther manages to barely make it out of there alive, the AT gun turning itself around, trying to get more shots off using his veterans, he's gonna get cleared out by the infantry, but can he get more damage? No, it cannot, that is all she wrote, center map, we have that Tiger going down, SU-85 going down as well, but we have a shock troop, or whatever you call it, a uh, vehicle shot going down. The ISU taking some shots at distance, takes another shot at that Tiger, getting another vehicle crew shot on the Tiger. The Tiger is a sitting duck right now. The SU-85 decides to move out of the field and not continue to engage. A little bit of a mistake, I think, there by Stofa. Should have just turned around and continued to shoot at the Tiger. The ISU did quite a good job at stopping it, and it's now very low in health. Could have even potentially taken it out. The Tiger's just backing off right now. The ISU taking shots as it can at all the infantry. And the SU-85 is now in pursuit, going over to the right-hand side, but decides to just stop. A bloody engagement here with all those tanks. We saw one ISU going down, one SU-85 going down, but we also saw one Tiger being lost and a Panther as well. So an equal, basically, engagement. And we see losses on both sides, and everybody's stabilizing that way. Right-hand side, Conscripts continue to push, trying to regain territory. We see the 
other IS-2 moving into position, gonna take some shots at the infantry. Oh, ho, ho, nasty shot, takes out the MG-42 completely, destroys the gun, in fact, and the crew is decimated. The conscripts holding their line, Grenadiers pushing forward to get a Shrek. That is a Shrek that got dropped by the uh, combat engineers. Uh, Grenadier retreating in the middle of everything, down to one man, but it's a very healthy man. Look at that. I mean, he almost has, I mean, obviously he accounts for 25% health of the squad because there are four men, but it almost looks like he has 25% on the entire squad. Shot going down by the S-85, trying to snipe him, but does not get the clear, and that is a Panzer Shrek that is now back in the hands of the German forces. Panzer Grenadiers pushing forward right on top of the SU-85. The SU-85 has not much to fear against it because they do not have Shreks, neither of them, in fact. So the Panzer Grenadiers are, you know, lay bundle late. However, it is a big threat, and that MG-42 does take a bundle late to the face, going down to two men. It is a better C3 MG-42, so Woodlow decides to back off and retreat. SU-85 taking some shots at the Panther. The Panther pops its Blitzkrieg and gets caught right in a very, very bad spot. Mark vehicle going down. ISU taking a shot at the Panther, but bouncing it off. More bounces. That SU-85 does not know where it's going. Takes a shot. Nice penetration on the frontal armor. More shots going down, but the Panther will make it out of there alive. No continued pursuit by uh, Stofa. He does not want to risk getting his vehicles caught on the wrong side. ISU getting caught right here by the SU-85, not allowing him to move out of the way. The SU-85 finally moves. And shot goes off at the Panzer Grenadiers, clearing them out down to one man and forced to retreat. Left-hand side, we see some Pios and a, what is that? What do you need? That is a need Maxim? Something? No, that's a stolen MG-42, okay. Over on the right, left-hand side to defend the victory point, that's for Stoppa. And center map, we now see uh, the Soviet forces pushing forward. We have yet another Panther on the field for um, for Fox Fox, and we sh also have another Tiger coming onto the field for Dilophosaurus. So once again, we have the same setup. Still, however, the uh, Soviet forces lost one of their ISUs, and they do not have enough to replace it just yet. So they are going to be a little bit behind there. Stofa does not have enough to get another SU-85, so again, he's not going to be able to get that victory. But he does have 80 guns in his favor, so that is always an option. We have no pack guns on the field for the German forces. We see some shots going down to the south. Ooh, Conscript Squad getting eliminated by the Panzer Grenadiers and Tiger. Quite unfortunate, and the shock groups do make it out of there alive. No Conscripts on the field now for Stofa. He's going to have to replace those if he wants to have some mobile capping forces, and on the left-hand side, we see a stolen Maxim machine gun for the Alophosaurus going for the victory point, but unfortunately for it, there is a stolen MG-42. Weapons that belong on the other team are going to face each other, and, well, that's going to be it. So the uh, the Maxim machine gun sets up in the heavy cover of the wall. The MG-42 looking at it in distance, but none of them actually shoot at each other, so they're going to just stay there. Center point getting captured by the Soviets. 322 points for the Soviets. 238 for the Germans. Still anybody's game at this point, but the Soviets are in the lead still. So they have, you know, a little bit more leeway if things go a little bit wrong. Cloak getting used now by Woodlow. Very nice. I like that. One thing to keep in mind is that while Cloak, the weapons should, if I'm not mistaken, move slower. So if you want to move them under fire, make sure you remove that cloak ability because even if they are visible they're gonna keep their reduced panther right hand sight going over to some harass we see the uh, the isu taking the shot at it and bouncing it off doing a little bit of damage but not quite a lot panther backs off conscripts taking shots a little bit of splash damage but that's about it left hand side combat engineers running into enemy troops that is a artillery field officer, mortar, and a grenadier squad over on the left-hand side. Going to be supporting their Maxim heavy machine gun to try to capture those points. And the center map is getting assaulted by grenadiers and Panzer grenadiers. SU-85 shooting as they approach. MG-42s and Maxim machine guns not really shooting much. Getting a suppression there. And we now see a strafing run. No, a fragmentation bomb running down. And boom, boom, boom. Wow, that AT gun actually dodged that quite nicely. And the uh, Maxim machine gun, or what is that, an MG-42? That's an MG-42 that got stolen. It's running back to base. Left-hand side, we see that the stolen MG-42 is getting out, outgunned, outmaneuvered. It has to jump out of the house and will retreat, conceding the left-hand side of the map to the superior tactical approaches of battle. 
I mean, to be fair, he did a pretty good assault here. He brought up his uh, MD or stolen MD to the wall for, you know, defense, brought a mortar and even a squad to be able to flush out that, uh, that MG42 and even use smoke, so very nice. Conscripts moving behind them, get into position and force away that mortar. So the stolen machine gun and the combat engineers, or not combat engineers, the artillery field officer now cut off behind enemy lines. The stolen MG shooting straight at the shock troops as they approach. The shock troops will probably throw a nade at it, I would assume. But over here on the right hand side, we see the ISU once again getting flanked by the Panthers. However, Panthers do get disabled on their engine and are going to continue to shoot forward, but the ISU, no, nope, does not make it out alive, so never mind. SU-85 is moving to support, taking some shots on the side armor of those Panthers. Those Panthers are a little bit unsupported. We see the Tigers barreling down in the center of the map, going to try to get a flank on the SU-85. The SU-85 is bouncing sh off shots off the front armor of those Panthers. The Panthers getting shot by the AT guns might go down, but the Tigers are now right on top of those SU-85. The AT gun turns around to face the Tigers as they approach. And one Panther goes down, second one will go down as well, and the AT gun will also remain alive. Panzer Grenadiers pushing forward, trying to get some bone lace off probably on something, and we see some shots going down from the mortar. And that's about it. Tigers do manage to clear out that AT gun completely, destroying it, but the su 85 are still on the field, and we now have yet another ISU on the field for Wood, so he will be able to utilize that amazing firepower from the ISU. It is very weak, as you can see, gets taken out very easily, but the range on it is just superb. Look at that shot go down. Takes a shot at the Tiger, probably even hits it and forces it to back off. Continues to push forward. That Tiger is a perfect target for it right now, but probably not visible. And the ISU is, I mean, the SU-85 pushes forward. Gonna take some shots and getting shot on the right hand side by the Grenadiers. These Grenadiers have a Shrek. That's why I took a shot and didn't get a crit on the engine, because that is not a Faust, that is a Shrek. Pioneers pushing forward. The ISU takes a shot and bounces it off the frontal armor. The Pios continue to push forward, trying to get behind that SU-85, and the SU-85 is being assaulted still. The ISU now decides to turn around, gonna take a shot from one of the Tigers. It keeps its frontal gun and armor pointed at the Tigers, but it's now backing off into the base. The SU-85 is trying to hold the line, taking a nasty barrage there by the Tigers. Down to a sliver of health. That SU-85 will go down. There it goes. And the ISU is shooting from the right-hand side, getting a little bit of a flank on those Tigers, getting shots onto the side armor. Very nice. And uh, this Tiger is very low in health. Look at that shot go off, down to 25% uh, health about. And the Tigers are forced to back off. SU-85 getting produced again for Stofa. The Tigers are backing off. And we have no vehicles, but a... Oh, we do have a vehicle. We actually have a Panzerwerfer on the field for Fox Fox. An interesting choice, but he no longer has any tanks, so he is not going to be able to do much. A shot goes off from the ISU, getting crew shock on that Tiger. The Tiger is stunned, going to have to back off once again. The ISU continues to shoot off at range. Nice shots going down. Look at that. Down to about 50% health. Forces a smoke barrage there by the mortars so that uh, the Tigers can back off. Not getting shot from the ISU because it has incredible range. Mortar on the right hand side, that is the stolen Soviet mortar, it has 12 kills to its name now, so the German forces putting it to use very, very nicely. We have an MG42 down on the world, and the Soviet forces are pushing forward through the smoke. Left hand side, we still have that stolen Maxim machine gun holding the line. We have a fuel cache over here for the Soviet forces, so that uh, artillery field officer will not be able to clear that out, at least not easily. And we have conscripts moving into the left hand side. ISU continue to taking shots at whatever it can. We see some Pios moving over here on the right hand side. Nasty shot there, kills two of them, forces a retreat, and there they go. MG42 does get picked up by Stofa, and he will reinforce the troops that picked it up and force them away. Chop troops moving into the center, gonna try to go for that point. We have some Panzer Grenadiers pushing on them. They will be able to do quite a bit of damage. These Panzer Grenadiers. The Panzer Grenadier squad, in fact, has the LMG, so they have quite a lot of anti-tank firepower. And look at that speed of that AT gun, because it's cloaked, doesn't really do a lot as far as movement goes. ISU taking some shots at the Panzer Grenadiers, and there goes the shot. I think it might have killed one, but that's about it. Not quite impressive. Grenadiers with Shrek and their Panzer Faust, quite a big threat. Taking shots at everything. SU-85 taking shots at the infantry as it approaches, but it's a little bit cut off. 
Uh, mortar shots landing in the center here with uh, smoke. Blocking line aside from anything over there, and the German infantry backs off and heads into the center. MU-42 not able to clear out that um, artillery field officer before it decaps the point. Sorry. My throat gets a little dry. Uh, anyways. MU-42 uh, manages to get the suppression on that uh, artillery field officer. We'll probably will get that pinned down before it captures it, but, you know, it takes a while. ISU taking some shots into the center, supporting their uh, conscripts. Nasty shots there. Those shots are amazing by the ISU. One last shot probably going to go off. No, line of sight is broken, and the ISU is no longer able to continue to shoot. No, it does shoot right there into the zone, and, well, she'll do some splash damage, but not a lot. And the damage over here on the north, we see some grenadiers sneaking behind the lines and getting onto that SU-85. The SU-85 takes a Panzer Shrek and a Panzer Faust. Uh, quite a nasty grenadier spot to veteran. C3 has an LMG, has a Shrek. All those abilities. Those combat engineers not able to do much. We also see a fragmentation run or bomb right on top of the SU-85. Can it actually clear it out? Conscripts are in the wrong spot and the whips it. Okay. Well, lucky there for Stofa. A little bit greedy, I, I should say, for uh, the Lophosaurus. But, you know, nice attempt. Center point getting shot at by the ISU. Takes a look at the Grenadiers. Oh, ho, ho, a nasty shot there by the ISU. Nails the Grenadier squad down. One man barely makes it out alive. Would have been a nice pickup there for the Soviet forces, but unfortunately for them. Well, those Grenadiers are quite tough. Left-hand side, shock troops going for capping. We have uh, Maxim machine guns going for capping. So the German forces now getting pushed back. They're having to lick their wounds. The Tigers are now back to full strength. We do have two SU-85s on the field uh, still. One on the field a little bit damaged. The other one back at base getting repaired. Almost fully repaired now, uh, but does have a damaged engine. So that's why it needs the repairs a little bit more. There it goes. And the ISU also as well covering this approach. And, yeah, a little bit of a lull. We see some smoke rounds landing right on top of the victory point. Oh, a nasty shot there by the Tiger. Nails three of those shock troops right away, forcing an instant retreat. They will retreat and take additional damage, getting a little bit stunned, losing more guys. But the AT guns, the ISUs, will stop those Tigers as they approach. So the shock troops should make it out alive. The SU-85 is pushing forward. We see another fragmentation bomb right on top of everything here. Will it kill anything? It... Oh, clears out both the AT gun and the MG-42, getting also a crew shock on that SU-85. The ISU trying to stop that Tiger as it approaches the SU-85. A very tough position, taking a lot of damage, forced to back off. It does have veteran C2, and we now see a Stuka barrage. Not Stuka, a yeah, strafing run right on top of all the uh, German forces. And we also saw a marked vehicle going down on one of the Tigers. Here it is, back here. This Tiger now very low in health. We also have a Panther for support for Fox Fox trying to stop the damage going down. Woodlow pushing forward is going to try to get an 18-8 up on that Tiger. The, uh, the Panther pushes forward, manages to get crew shocked by the ISU. The ISU backs off, does not want to get flanked by that Tiger. And a nasty strafing run clears out that Grenadier spot. That was the Grenadier spot that had the Shrek, if I'm not mistaken. It did do a little bit of damage to that ISU. The ISU pushes forward, smoke popping on that uh, Panther. The Tiger pushes forward to support. And we do have two IS, uh, two SU-85s on the field. SU-85 forced to back off. The Tiger pushing forward. We do have the Panther running over on the right-hand side, getting away. And the Stuka Barrage right on top of the uh, Stuka. Yeah, Thermalwing, sorry. Right on top of that Tiger, doing a little bit of damage. Not a lot. The Tiger can take it. But with the combined shots of everything, just forced to back off. Nasty assault there, left hand side. Artillery field officer trying to get forced away by the Maxim machine gun. The Maxim machine gun opens up and manages to get the suppression off. And those Soviet tanks are a little bit battered. So yeah, if I'm not mistaken, the Grenadier squad that was oh so good got cleared out right there by the Sturmovik. Yeah, this Grenadier squad over here has his G43s. And also has a Shrek, so I suppose he does have, you know, still a, a little bit of versatility there, but yeah, we lost it over here and the LMG got dropped. 
victory point getting shot at by the Panzerwerfer. We still have a lot of German vehicles on the field. That is three Tigers. Uh, and, well, I suppose you can count this as a vehicle. <laughs> no pull blitz. Um, and we also have that uh, that Panther somewhere around here. Where is it? No, that's not it. There it is. Enemy forces capturing supply sector. So that is quite a nasty set of, of tanks. Uh, we do have Tigers getting repaired right now. One of them almost fully repaired now it is so at least one tank is combat effective right now but uh but yeah these tigers took quite a bit look at this guy it's down about five percent health this one at about 30 and the panther is also at about uh 40 percent right now because it's getting repaired by a vet three pioneer which gets increased uh increased repair speed conscripts over on the right hand side they picked themselves up an lmg is that the lmg that got dropped over here yeah that's the same lmg Tiger moving in for support. The Grenadiers with their G43s and the Shrek doing quite a bit of uh, damage to those conscripts, forced to retreat. Mortar shots from the Germans, just taking shots as they can. That's a standard German mortar at Veteran C3. And a Soviet mortar, the 120mm mortar at Veteran C1. It's a powerful weapon, but the Germans are not quite used to how it handles. They prefer their own mortars because they can shoot faster. And, well, it reflects there. Veteran C3. <laughs> Grenadiers, Panzer Grenadiers pushing over to the left hand side. The Panzer Grenadiers are in the wrong position. These Grenadiers would have needed to actually go to this point so they could have actually cleared out this weapon cache. But oh well. We see shock troops and uh, veterans using shock troops pushing onto those Grenadiers. Nice nade right on top of those Grenadiers. Does quite a bit of damage. Shock troops dodging the rifle nade and they are forced to retreat. The one with the Shrek died, but another one pulled out a Shrek out of his pants and he's going to be fine. Shock troops trying to pursue those Panzer Grenadiers. They will be able to catch up to them. And there is a uh, MG42 uh, Maxim machine, actually, over here on this house, which will start shooting at those uh, Panzer Grenadiers as soon as they can. Does take a shot, gets a suppression, and the pin down will probably be going down. A bundle lay going down in the house will clear out a couple of units, but they're still alive and they will be fine. Panzer Grenadiers now forced to retreat. Shock troops shooting them down as they retreat. There is a shock troop squad in the way. However, I don't think they will come into play, and the Panzer Grenadiers will make it out alive at one. Center map, we see the German, I mean the Soviet uh, tanks just pushing forward. Those are three Su 85s now on the field. The ISU way back there for support. Pretty much has this, the same range as these Su 85s where they currently are. And we have some mortars on the field for the picking of anybody. German mortars moving over to the right hand side trying to recap territory. There is a conscript squad in the way, and that one yeah, millimeter yeah, mortar could fall. There is the uh, Grenadier squad over on the right-hand side that is Veteran C3 with Shrek and stuff, so it is quite a nasty threat. And we see the Tiger still getting repaired. Third Tiger now finally about to get fully repaired. No, not fully repaired. Finally getting repaired. It's at about halfway now. But we now have another Panther on the field. Also, you may have noticed, even though I haven't mentioned it, uh, that... Um, uh, blah, 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 blah. Sorry, Fox Fox has been using his uh, veterancy ability to give veterancy to his, to his tanks and stuff. As you can see, this Panther is brand new, no kills or anything, but it does have veterancy 1. Even though this only has 2 and veterancy 2, but I mean, that's why they're getting that. And we now see the Tiger Ace called on the field for Fox Fox. So I think this is what they were waiting for. This Tiger over here is trying to get into the party as fast as it can, but it's still... A little bit ways off, the Tigers push a little bit forward, I believe. It's a little bit folly of them to go by themselves. They need to wait and go for one consolidated push with that Tiger race. That Tiger race plus the Panthers for the flank. This is going to be setting up for a massive, well, blitzkrieg, essentially, of German tanks. Those Soviet tanks, uh, I don't think it's going to be enough. There is two ISUs on the field, however, and those ISUs have a tendency of doing some uh, crew shock on tanks, so might not be all that bad. One ton of mortar getting assaulted by veteran C3 conscripts. Shots landing very close, so very accurate, but not quite. Tigers pushing forward on their own. Not exactly sure what that officer is thinking here. The Tiger Ace is back there, not doing much. It does hit Lick Streak and is going to try to get behind those tanks. The SU 85 just back off. Down goes that Tiger Van. That was very. Ugh. Panthers pushing forward, trying to go for the flank, but look at that ground they have to cover before they can get anywhere near the tanks. One of them taking incredible engine damage. That's actually a destroyed engine, heavy engine damage. One Panther does manage to get behind the tanks, forcing them all to refocus their target. 
And the Tiger Race is currently in the center, getting some engine damage as well. That is heavy engine damage. So he's going to have a hard time pushing forward. This Panther over here does end up taking critical engine damage as well. Goes down to the Soviet forces, and the Tiger continues to push. All of these Tigers have damaged engines. The other Tiger is finally getting back onto the field. The Tiger Race is not even getting prepared. Should be getting prepared right now, but can't. The Tiger is just sitting in front of three SU-85s and an ISU. Does manage to destroy the engine on one of the SU-85s, but it does go down. This SU-85 is still alive, still a threat. Look at those barrages go down. The ISU helps out, and Crew Shock goes down on that SU-85. 5% bug, and it stays alive. That was a very costly attack here for the German forces. Another Tiger called onto the field by Dilophosaurus. He has a lot of... Uh, a lot of... Uh, fuel to be able to do that. You can see right here, this him. But, uh, yeah. That Tiger Race is now getting beaten on by everything. It's trying to get repaired on the field, but I don't know what it's trying to do. It, oh, wow, that explosion was so potent that it actually glitched out the game, it looked like. You see that? Kind of stuttered that one. So that Tiger Race is currently a sitting Doug. ISUs, SU-85s, everything's just shooting at it from range. Taking quite a bit of punishment to die. I mean, it is no, you know, slouch. It's a Tiger Race, but even a Tiger Race cannot stop you. All that, and down goes the Tiger Race. Fox Fox still has no resources, so that's a dead player. We do have a Tiger on the field for Dilophosaurus with the second one following it up because of the fuel he had in reserve. So he still has a little bit of a fighting chance. Via, uh, victory point wise, 62 down for the Soviet forces, 102 left for the Germans. So they have managed to do quite a bit of pressure there. Left hand side, we see Panzer Grenadiers getting killed off by the, uh, the shock troops at Veteran G3. The artillery field officer trying to hold or do its best it can against these shock troops, but it is an artillery field officer which is already gimped as firepower goes. It is Veteran G2, but that's a Veteran G3 squad. A smoke goes down by the shock troops trying to break line of sight. They're now getting annihilated by the Grenadiers, however, and they are going to have to retreat, although a second shock troop squad moves in for support. One shock troop squad does go down, however, a little bit too greedy there for Stolfa, but he is a little bit desperate in the victory point count, so he wants to recover this point as fast as possible. Grenadiers trying to do as much as they can, a nade going down on the artillery field officer, getting a kill. LMG getting equipped on those grants, and the Tiger is moving up to the north, trying to flush out or uh, push out those uh, shock troop squads, and the shock troops are just running right on top of the artillery field officer. They're going to be able to clear it out if they don't goof it out. The Tiger ends up actually being the one that clears out the squad. Two friendly kills, and the shock troops are just dancing around the point, trying to do as much as they can to get it. They decide to retreat right as relief comes to be able to keep the cap going, stop that bleed down to 41 points, and an 18 8 goes off, but doesn't manage to get a kill. Uh, ISU and SU 85 is moving over to the right hand side, gonna try to force off those Tigers. The Tigers are now getting flanked by SU 85s, the SU 85s, and the ISUs right in front of everything. The Mark vehicle going down on that Tiger. That Tiger is gonna go down. We still have no resources for Fox Fox, but Fox Fox is essentially, like I said, dead right now. So it's a one on two. Oh, a nasty uh, fragmentation bomb right on top of those uh, SU 85s. Gives them a little bit of crew shock, forcing them to back off. The SU-85s as well backing off, but now they're back. SU-85s take shots at the Tiger, down it goes, and the second Tiger is now down to a sliver of health. I don't think there's much else that can be done here, and I believe the uh, Soviets will be able to pull this out. Down goes the other Tiger, and the German forces, as you can see down there, are essentially decimated. We have that, and that's it. Wow, an amazing game here. It, uh... Anybody's game at that point, and that was, I th I think, well, at least in my opinion, uh, it went down because the, well, a lot of very lucky uh, and well-placed shots and maybe even mines here in the center, destroying and doing a lot of engine damage to the tanks as they approached, but it wasn't uh, very well coordinated. We saw the two Tiger ships went in on their own, then the Tiger Ace came up, then the Panthers came up after that, and then the other Tiger uh, came up, you know, on the side, so... If they had all moved in unison at the same time, even with flanks, you know, even moving one over here, moving over here, and trying to get the Panthers maybe to come through this angle just to get the flank. If they had set up to make them hit at the same time, it might have been a different uh, engagement. But essentially, since they came in trickling in like in sets of two at most, uh, they just ended up getting focused down by the Soviet armor. But anyways, I, like I said, an amazing game. I enjoyed it incredibly. And uh, the ISU is just a beast.
So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the game. Once again, let me know what you think of the overlay. I think this is a little bit better. It doesn't clutter the screen, and, you know, this southern bar, it's still available there to view. And we also have, you know, stuff like the, uh, the unit uh, upgrades there that we can see. So, you know, it doesn't uh, obstruct that either. But again, let me know what you guys think. Uh, once again, uh, thank you so much for watching. If you have any positive or negative remarks, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. If you have any replays you want to send me, go ahead and send them to the email that I will put in the description. But otherwise, I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.